put this up here so it'll sort of be ready. You know, when you knock it off, it goes in the seat hole. Yeah. And we have to get Wayne to get it. Yes. 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 Yes.
Good morning, church. I guess all this vicious rain we've had is keeping everybody away, making them late, right? They're stuck in the mud. The praise to hear that thunder last night uh, knocked us right out of bed with it, right over. So, then it went away. That's good. Uh, the Lord Jesus be with you as we uh, stand as for our uh, opening song from the surely the presence of the Lord. Let's stand as we sing. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel its mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Father God, it is a joy for us to come in and worship you in this house and know that you are listening carefully and you're checking each heart. We just pray that each one would be open to you and be willing to praise you in all, all our might. We thank you for the rain you've given us and look forward to some more. We just know you know how badly we need it. We thank you for these that are here. We ask that you be made joyful from our praise that we give you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Our opening hymn is number 363, And Can It Be That I Should Gain? Like Rick's going to lead us in this one. Turn. 
scripture, which is Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Watch that first step. Good morning, church. My name is Nancy Crawford, and I'll be reading from the Lord's word. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this is a covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and on their heart. I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will not teach again, each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you may be seated. We have our Lenten reading. On this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, we add another symbol to our remembrance of the last events in the physical life of Jesus. This event is the gambling of the soldiers over the tunic of Jesus at the foot of the cross. It is symbolized with a tunic and a pair of dice. While Jesus is suffering upon the cross, at the foot of the cross, Roman soldiers are dividing the spoils by casting lots for Jesus' clothing. The use of lots, whether cast or drawn, was even then a very ancient way of making decision and determining God's will. The land of Canaan was divided among the 12 tribes of Israel by the use of lots. When Jonah fled by ship from God's will and a great storm arose, the sailors cast lots to determine who on the ship was the cause of the storm. The lot fell to Jonah. They threw him overboard. The lots were also, the lots were also used by the disciples after the re resurrection to choose a successor to Judas. In ancient times, stones or inscribed tablets were used. A modern form of using lots would be drawing straws or casting dice. Here we find Romans using lots to determine who will win the garments of our dying Savior. Isn't it sad that they wanted so very little from Jesus? There was so much more that he was wanting to give them. He offered them forgiveness. Instead of a few garments, Jesus was prepared to clothe them in the perfect righteousness of God. Okay, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Frank Stevenson filling in for Aaron, who's taking some time to be with his family during this spring break. And uh, in our bulletin, be sure uh, you sign in the little booklet there in your pew closest to the center aisle. Pass it down if there's somebody else in your row. I also want to remind you that next uh, month is our Meals on Wheels uh, what do you, time. <laughs> we, go, we, we deliver Meals on Wheels on Tuesday. There's a sign-up sheet back in the back uh, for each Tuesday. 
and you show up at 10, it says on there, so uh, uh, down at the Trinity Lutheran Church and take your pick of a route and deliver the meals. Uh, we also have a table in the social hall that we're auctioning off, and it's, I think it's getting pretty close to the time to, to send it out, so you need to go back and look and see if you want to bid on it. Uh, it's in the, uh, like I say, it's a, in the social hall, right at the, you, you can't miss it. It's a, bi it's a big table. You need to have a big room to put it in. Uh, we also, this week, have our Lenten luncheon. It's going to be here. We're going to have King Ranch chicken. We're going to show them people how to feed. Uh, Kathy's got it all laid out, I'm sure. But uh, where's the note? Oh, from Kathy. All right. I didn't see that. Please bring your King Ranch casseroles and desserts to the Lenten lunch at 11 a.m. that 11 a. on that day, March 21st, to the Fellowship Hall kitchen. Kathy will be there by 9:30 if you want to drop them off early. We need volunteers to help set up tables for the Lenten luncheon. To help, please come on Wednesday, March 20th at 10 a.m. Many thanks to all of you who volunteer for their time and help us. Okay. Uh, get it, we'll get it all worked out. Uh, also, in your bulletin is the, if you want to give lilies for Easter, you need to fill that out and turn it in. Do they put it in the collection basket if they need to or, or bring it by the, the office? And on the other side, the uh, Passover week, or Holy Week. We're not going to be having a Seder meal on Wednesday. We're just going to have a regular Monday, Thursday service on Wednesday, communion. And uh, I think he's, you're talking about having it during uh, April, uh, just before Passover, to, to the more correct time. Any other announcements that I have just totally overlooked? Oh, well, you got Troy. I bet he's got some shirts to see. Good morning, church family. Good morning, it's good to be here today in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 So uh, this week has been a break of spring, and we're back to normal schedule with youth on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Uh, this coming Wednesday is our theater group dress rehearsal, so a date coming soon. We'll be putting out to you guys an opportunity to come and see them uh, do their kind of pre-screen, and then uh, we'll move on to our live events starting in, in April, giving them an opportunity and a vehicle to get out of the four walls and to minister the gospel through theater and that piece. Um, there is uh, this coming Sunday, the 24th, a uh, worship event from 5 to 7. It's right in the afternoon of the service, and uh, our youth worship uh, group is going to be leading that. And if you'd like to come, this is just an opportunity to worship, sit at his feet, get prayer. We're just being expectant to see miracles, and the youth are going to be uh, the ones uh, leading that. So that's an exciting uh, piece there. I think we already showed the uh, Monday, Thursday. Let's go to the In the Light Music Festival. So April 6th, there's an eclipse coming right through Blanco, probably with 150,000 people. <laughs> so we were like, hmm. April 8th, April 8th. Yes. Well, that weekend, I think it'll be quite a busy weekend here. Uh, so that Saturday from 12 to 630, we're going to be hosting a music festival right out here in the front. Uh, a couple of big bounce houses for the kids to have games. If our youth theater uh, team is ready, they'll be doing their performance. And uh, quite a lineup. Uh, Clifton Jansky is going to close the day. Bobby Max is going to open. Our youth uh, bands, there are three bands that are going to be playing that day. Uh, their uh, original music to debut. And uh, we are selling fashionable t-shirts outside. <laughs> if you call now. Uh, gear up on, if you go to the, the church website, blankomc.org, right on the homepage, there's a link there. Go to slide two. There's four or five other designs there that you can order online. All of the proceeds are going to go to supporting our youth group 
And uh, what we want to try to do is create fundraisers like this that we can use as an opportunity to raise the funds we need to get to some mission and outreach oriented uh, things throughout the year. So we'll probably do two or three events similar to this uh, throughout this year of 2024 to give us the capital we need to get them out and ministering the gospel. Outside of that, Wednesdays, we have not had to buy food from a gas station. That's amazing. Yes, thank you, Kathy and Chris and uh, Elizabeth and Susan for cooking a really nice meal this Wednesday. We're kind of back on schedule to that, I believe. Uh, Elizabeth's going to uh, warm up some food for that one. She might be behind me. I'm throwing her in the bus right now. <laughs> yep. So uh, if, if you'd love to help with that, the kids are so appreciative in this season of seeing us be present with them. I'll chase after them and run around with them, but just your presence coming and being with them. If you're ever off on a Thursday from 4 to 6, just come hang out. And just seeing that the presence of, is there from the church has really been uh, something very inspiring for them. Back to you, Frank. Wednesdays from 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. I just said Wednesday. Any other announcements that we need to make? And it's Pastor Rick. Morning, church. Morning. Good morning. Before we do anything else, let's give God thanks for the rain. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't know how y'all were awakened this morning at two o'clock, but in my house it sounded like we were right in the middle of an artillery battle. <laughs> but we did get an inch and a half of rain, so I'm not going to complain about that. Our prayer concern should be on the screen here in just a moment. <clears throat> Just a moment. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, if you have prayer concerns, please write them down on the, the prayer request cards and place them in the offering uh, folder this, after, this morning, and we will, we will put, add them to the prayer list. Uh, I want to just take two seconds to support the youth prayer, the youth-led prayer service on the 24th. That's going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to try and do that, a prayer service like that, at least once a month. So please put that on your calendars and come to that uh, when you can. Our prayer hymn this morning is Just a Closer Walk with Thee, number 2158 in the Faith We Sing.
just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my clean. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be. Just a closer walk with thee. What an awesome prayer uh, for all of us to remember every chance we get that we should be asking God to make sure we have a closer walk with him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, it is such a blessing to be gathered in your house this morning together with our family and friends and worshiping you and offering our praises and thanksgivings to you, laying our cares at your feet being blessed by the, by the reading of your holy word, and being blessed by hearing the message that you have given Pastor Carlos to bring this morning. Well, God, as, as, we, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, we are praying that you will give us the opportunity to have a closer walk with you. Keep us focused, O oh God, in, on, on those things that are most important for your kingdom and not on the things of this earth. Keep our hearts straight and right with you. Give us clarity of thought and speech when we have an opportunity to bring a witness to someone who desperately needs to know the, the love and saving grace of Jesus Christ. Bring us closer to you, O oh God, as we offer the opportunity to others to get to know Jesus. As we come this morning, oh God, we are certainly grateful for the rain. We pray that you'll send more, but maybe in smaller amounts over a longer period of time. And Lord, as we, as we are thankful for the rain, we are thankful that, that you give us a place to come and to give thanks. So Lord, as we, have, as we have come this morning, we pray that your spirit would be among us, that he would be upon us, and that we would be led and empowered by your spirit to take the great good news of Jesus Christ out to, into a hurting world that so desperately needs to hear it. Lord, we have, we have offered before you our prayer concerns this morning. We know that you're aware of all of them even before we are. We know that your hand is on each person for whom we pray. And we know, Lord God, that uh, in your great plan, that things will work out according to your will. Lord, as we, as we pray for those folks this morning, there are probably others whose names are not on the board yet, and we pray for them, Lord. We know that uh, you have got them in your hand just as, as, as you have those that we've already prayed for. And Lord, we ask that, that you would that you place your hand on our nation and restore yeah. it. Make it that place, oh God, that, that you planted so many years ago. 
bring your, our people, bring our, all of us back to a focus on you and away from focusing on petty politics and squabbles. All the things we ask and we pray we do in the name of the one who taught us to pray this way, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's continue our worship with our collection of our tithes and offerings. If we'd have our ushers would come forward. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's pray. Father God, we come at this time now to offer to you just some of what you've given us. You've given us so much. We just thank you for it. We ask that you bless it and guide us in its use. It's in Christ's name we pray. So 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Second scripture from John. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? You do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. If you will bow your heads with me, let's be in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you would speak through your Holy Spirit the word that we need to hear as a church. We pray, Lord God, that you would shout your name across this nation. And the glory of the Lord would fill the earth. We pray for faithful preaching and a faithful witness in the lives and the hearts of your people. Oh, God, draw us back to you. We pray this now in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. All right, church, this is going to be a little different, maybe. Maybe I've always been different, and I didn't realize it. Do you believe in divine signs? Do you believe that God can speak into our lives? I've told you the story about how God spoke to me through a green candle when my mom 
was going through a hard time, and my dad had died, and, and she told me they were having a birthday party in heaven for my dad, and, and, uh, and then I got a green candle. Do you believe that God does those sort, of th- so, those sort of things? How about when I told you about Glenn James, and we did that funeral, and, and we talked about a butterfly in the service, and then during the graveside, a butterfly landed on the leg of Ray Hernandez and then flew into the grave. Do you believe that was from God? D- does God do things like that? When we were giving thanks around the Thanksgiving table and, and every one of us had to say what we were thankful for and I finally came to that place and said, I thank God he brought salvation to our entire family and that candle that we had lit that was about ready to die and I went and blew up and it was like we all felt like that was a God thing saying, yes, amen. Do we believe that God speaks into our lives? Do we believe that God speaks and gives signs to a nation. I'll tell you what, church. I really believe that something powerful happened when Jesus took his finger and knelt down on the ground and the finger of the almighty God in Jesus touched the earth and he began to write. I believe that God is a God who gives us warnings. During a feast in Babylon, the finger of God touched the wall and wrote, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Upadasans. They didn't understand what it meant, but Daniel, he gave the interpretation, and there was a judgment, a warning of God. Do we believe that God could do that? You know, Genesis, Genesis 1.14 says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and they shall serve as signs. And for seasons, and for days, and for years. Wow. Signs. Is it possible? A God said that he would give us signs. And he said he's going to use the cosmos. In fact, you're, all of us are held accountable by this creation. Just the glory of creation, just the sunrise and sunset, God's going to hold you accountable. Do you know that there's a God? You can't look at it without knowing there's a God. And the heavens and the earth are declaring his glory. But is it possible God said that he would give us, he would give us signs in the stars and the sun and the moon, warnings. And in the feasts, those seasons, though that word there is talking about the feasts, the feasts of Israel. That's why we made the change, and we decided this year to do the Seder feast, not according to the church calendar, but according to the calendar of Israel, right before the Passover, because I believe God wants us to learn about the feasts. We're missing something by not understanding what God declared for his people to know and to practice, and so we're going to be teaching the feasts, and we're going to start patterning Things not taken away from what we have done, but trying to catch up to understand the way God wants us to think. Signs. You know, Jesus said, there's a sign that's going to be given to you. A sign about God working out his plan of redemption. And that would be the sign of Jonah. Now, I mean, this is straight out of the scripture. So the scripture says we have a place, a narrative of something historically that had happened that we can look back at and gather principles of. And he also says that we could also have signs in the skies. Now, people have asked me, what do you think about this eclipse that's coming along? It's kind of funny that we're talking about the cloak that they gambled for from Jesus and we're selling shirts for the eclipse, it's kind of funny how it seems like it went together like we had a plan. And today, I was going to address this eclipse thing because someone asked, I said, well, unless it's over Israel, then I'm not too worried about it until I started to realize God has always given warnings and signs to different locations. That The mene, mene, tekel, upara signs was in Babylon. This, is, this was a... Sign for them. Is it possible that this eclipse that's coming up is a sign to the United States of America? 
It's a call. Let me tell you something. We've had three eclipses in the recent years. If you look at two of those eclipses and you put them together, the one that's coming up and the one that came through in 2017, those were total eclipses. It makes an X, but if you look at it in Hebrew, it's the Hebrew letter, not yet, catch on the back, the Hebrew letter, Tav. That's it. And then if you add the eclipse that we had just a year ago, the, the, it wasn't a total eclipse, the annular, is it what you call it? Whatever, that not full eclipse, you add that, now it comes up with an olive. It's so funny. Now you say, this is crazy. Let me tell you something. Jonah was crazy. Okay? Yeah, I mean, think about it, him coming to preaching and smelling like fish. I mean, what are you going to smell like after being three days in the belly of a fish? And oh, how about Noah? He was crazy. But look at this. Right there, over our nation, we have the Aleph and the Tav that have been written as if by the finger of God. Now, you say, you know, you can say, oh, that is just crazy. You need to think like that unless it is true. Is it possible, God? Who, I don't know what it means, but I've been telling you something about this Aleph and Tav. It's a, a new revelation that has come about, and it's, it's like God is getting this message out that he wants us to understand that he has given this and this book, and he wants us to understand it, and there's mysteries hidden within it. And I believe there's a day of new revelation that he said he's going to do. He's going to pour out a spirit of revelation in the last days, and it is whether we will see it and believe it, that you have to have the faith of a child. Now, what does it mean that the Aleph and Tav has been written over the United States with the path of these, these eclipses? I have no idea. But I'll tell you something. I believe that God is on the move. I look at this eclipse on April 8th of 2024, I think it's kind of interesting that it's happening on the first of Nisan. <laughs> there are some teachers, one of my favorite teachers is Jonathan Kahn. He believes, now he believes, David, he believes that that is when Jesus was born. The first of Nisan is the first day of the Jewish New Year, the religious New Year, the year that God told Moses, this is going to be the first day, a new beginning. And here, this eclipse on April 8th of 2024, according to the Jewish calendar, is on the first of Nisan. You know what else? If you go to the Jewish uh, website called Chabad, okay? Let's practice saying that together. Chabad. <laughs> I, I saw a, a, a piece on uh, the TV with, uh, I think it was Ed Sullivan trying to say that, and it was hilarious. Anyhow. Did you know that according to Haman, the first of Nisan is the day that they have tagged for the creation of humanity? That God said he created man on the first of Nisan. How would they know? I have no idea, but it's on the Chabad website. They also say that it's in Nisan that all the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were both born and died in Nisan. They also say that that is the beginning of the calendar because God said this is the first month of the year. Nisan the first is the first day of the year. It's also the day that the tabernacle, the first tent, was constructed so that the house of God would be manifest on this earth, the Mishkan. It's also the day that two priests of God were slain by bringing strange fire into the temple before God. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, were slain on the first of Nisan. It's also possibly the birthday of Jesus. Now, what is the significance of that? I have no idea. I, and if anybody tells you this is what's going on, I would be hesitant to believe them because no one knows until God tells you what he did. But the point of, of it is, later on, you're going to see, no, I gave you warnings. 
And the church needs to take caution and realize our God is speaking. And we need to ask him, what are you speaking into our lives? I mean, what a coincidence. Now, you might go online and listen, and they say this, this eclipse coming on April 8th of 2024 is going to pass through. There are only seven, seven cities in our country named Nineveh. And it's going to pass through all seven. That's not true. It's going to pass through two of them, and it's passing amongst all seven. But it's going to pass through over two of those towns called Nineveh. Now, it still should give us caution. Because, you know, when Jonah, who's called a sign for us, okay, not just for the Pharisees, but for us, Jonah, when he went to Nineveh, did you know that before he went, that there was an eclipse in 763 B.C.? Did you know that? Did you know that there was a famine? Did you know that the people were primed so that when Jonah came, and let me just tell you something, he preached a short sermon. It was a lousy sermon. Forty days and Nineveh is no more. Hey, forty days and Nineveh is no more. That was the sermon. No illustrations. You're dead meat in 40 days. God's going to fry you. And that was all it took. They repented. Why? Maybe because of the sign they saw. Maybe because they saw impending judgment. And they repented. And God changed his mind. He heard their prayers. And he forgave them of their sin. Don't we have an awesome God? Don't we have an awesome God? Church, we need to get excited about a God who forgives sins. You know why? Because you all are sinners. When I say you all, I'm including me in that. Now, let me tell you something. He preached 40 days. You know, I go, Lord, when these things are lining up with important times according to the Jewish calendar, I don't know exactly what to think, but it makes me think, God, what are you up to? Because when Jesus was crucified, there was an eclipse. There was darkness for three hours. That's some equal. I have no idea how that happened. But there was a blood moon. God has done these things. He's worked the cosmos so that the heavens are declaring his glory. And the question is, will you believe? Will you hear? Or are you going to just go, eh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to get my little glasses. And we're going to roast weenies after that. But let me tell you something. Jesus said that when things come about, people are going to be eating, drinking, and roasting weenies. I started thinking about, it. well, what is, what is the uh, 40 days after April 8th? We come up to May 18th. May 18th. On May 18th, what happened? It was the day that Eli, the priest of God, fell over backwards and died because the Ark of the Covenant had been captured. And there was a judgment on the priest of God. Let me tell you something. Whatever God is intending, one thing I think we need to do is tell the church we need to shape up. It never hurts to hear a message on repentance. It doesn't increase any tithing, but it never hurts to hear a message about repentance. Let me, you know what's really weird, too? I've, I haven't even heard this on the, on the internet except one site, and it said, during this same time period, right when the true Jewish Passover is happening, not ours because we've changed it, did you know that there's a comment that's called the devil comment? It's 12P Ponds Brook comment called the devil comment that is going to come through, it's going to be at its closest to the sun on the, uh, April the 21st. The next day is Passover, according to the Jewish calendar. Okay? And it's going to be the closest to the earth in June of um, uh, uh, June 2nd. And yet, I mean, I don't know what all this stuff means. But I want you to know something. God is going to do something 
The second coming is going to happen, and the majority of the church of Jesus Christ, there might be someone here coming to a Methodist church thinking, I didn't think we really believed this stuff. I thought we just sang Amazing Grace, and what a friend we have in Jesus. and went home and ate potato salad. I thought that's what church was all about. And yet, I believe that we're going to see that God has given us his word. I mean, something is about ready to break, and the question is, will the church be ready for God to move and for the redemptive plan of salvation to come to fruition. Let me tell you something. There are those of us, there's those of us in the church today, right now in this place, who believe that this planet is billions of years old because it's over time. And there are some of us who believe that it's actually God working on a 7,000 year plan, the millennial kingdom as being that 7,000th year and that we're coming to an end of the 6,000. Now, let me tell you something. We'll know soon whether there's something to the 6,000-year plan of God or not. But if it is a 6,000-year plan, guess what? You have the blessing of being part of that generation that ushers in the end of that 6,000 years. Now, this sounds like craziness. I don't know what to even think about it. But I'll tell you this. There's one message I need to hear is we serve a sovereign God. We serve a God who loves you. And if there's nothing else we need to hear, is we need to hear the message that we need to repent and we need to know God. And that message is true no matter what happens. Not too long ago, uh, in uh, March, uh, so in 2012, uh, it was uh, uh, March 20th, 2012, uh, that a tornado went through Divine, Texas. Remember that? It wasn't too long ago. There's a little girl by the name of Jessie Juarez. Jessie Juarez was a home by herself uh, with her dog, Jack-Jack. And this tornado comes through. Her mom is at church, and Divine is getting hit by this gigantic tornado. And the tornado destroyed her house, took off the roof. All the walls were knocked down. She ran into the bathroom with Jack-Jack and hid there, and the only wall that was remaining in the house was in that bathroom. But what was interesting was there was a plaque that they had hanging on the wall in the living room, the wall that disappeared, and the plaque was taken up and placed right there in the bathroom next to her, and it said, Faith, you have been saved by grace. Isn't that the kind of God you like to have? A God, man, he's got this little girl. And there was a message. He, he gave her a sign, didn't, didn't he? Uh, she had to buy it, put it in the living room, but he put it in the right room when it was time was at hand. Let me tell you something. I don't know what's going to unfold, but I tell you this. The church better straighten up, and I'm going to tell you how we need to straighten up in this message, and I want you to hear it. And I know that this is going to cause you to talk when you leave here and you sit down for lunch today. Because you and I need to analyze our lives, analyze our church, and ask, do we really believe this is the word of God? Do we really believe the finger of God is touching this earth and this nation of ours? And what does God expect? You know what it comes right down to it? Church, I want to challenge you. Do we know God? We need to know God. It's all about knowing God, and God has introduced himself to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Do you have him as your Lord and Savior? Do you know him? Do you, is he in your heart? Is he your, your life force? Is he the one who drives you, the one who calls you, the one who motivates you? Do we know God? The Hebrew word for knowing God is the word yada. Yada, now this word means to know him, to perceive, to see, to find out, to discern. It means literally to, to have relations so that when you know him, something creative is happening within you. Can we see the finger of God? Can we hear his voice when he's speaking? I guarantee you he's crying out to this earth, and I believe he's shouting to this nation. And let me tell you something. The church of Jesus Christ has been asleep because we've allowed our kids to be robbed from us. We have allowed this nation to slip down into a level of depravity that I didn't think it was possible because I thought there were some good old boys in Texas that were rednecks, even more than Christian, who would say, no, we ain't going to put up with it. 
And we've all kept silent. And it's time for the church to go, oh, my gosh, God, what do you want me to do? God wants us to know him. That's how he created us to begin with. We knew God. We knew what was good. But when we ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, then we knew evil. And evil became part of us. And now there's a corruption. And he wants us to know him and to love him, to have that relationship. Now, here's the secret. The secret is for us to truly become one with him, even as Jesus is one with the Father. Listen to what it says in John 17. He says, I do not ask in behalf of these alone, but for those who have, who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou didst send me. You see what, the, it's all about relationship. You know what the church needs to be? The church needs to be the body of Christ that is one with each other because we're one in Jesus, even as Jesus is in the Father. And we, we are acting not out of rules and religion, but we're acting out of a relationship because we're in love with our Father. And he's in love with us. We want to be like Jesus. We want to serve him and seek his will, preach his word. And when we're one in that, Satan cannot stop us. He cannot deceive us because we stand together and we have a relationship with the God of truth. Amen? Amen. Now, Jesus' relationship with, us, with the Father, he said, I and the Father are one. Jesus did nothing of his own initiative. It's really hard for people who are used to being independent to get this. If we're going to be like Jesus, we don't need to be operating according to our own initiative, but we need to be in relationship with our Father. Jesus said that everything he did was submitted, submitted to the Father. John 5, 19, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. In John 5, 30, he says, by myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear. In John 8, 28, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be and that I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. This is what Jesus said he was. He had that relationship with the Father, a unity so that he was totally submitted to the Father. We need to be totally submitted to the Father if we're going to be in him. We need to be totally surrendered. It's not about... <laughs> the church has allowed people to think that it's about what you want. It's about what makes you happy rather than it's about what God wants. You know, I have felt crazy doing a Monday, Thursday service on Wednesday. But I believe that's what God wanted me to do. I believe God wants us to tell the church, hey, maybe we haven't been doing things correctly. Is it possible? Can we introduce the possibility that God had organized something else and that he has certain expectations? Jesus revealed that the essence, what the essence was of the new nature. The Father is in me and I am in him. It's all about the faith of Jesus Christ being eternal, internalized. It's not about whether you have the T-shirt. It's not about whether you put a bumper sticker on or a fish on your car. The question is, is God in your heart? It's the internalization of the soul. He says, I'm going to write my law within them. And, and then it goes on to say in Jeremiah, he says, no longer... Uh, well, they have to teach one another, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. The question is, do we know God? Do we have that relationship? Is his law written on our hearts? That's what God wants. Let me tell you something. For you to think that the law was taken away, no. It's written on our hearts. But we now need to reveal the character of God because we're in his family. This is how his children are supposed to live. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be a strange and peculiar people, not marching to the drumbeat of the world, but marching to the voice of God. 
the seeing things the way he sees things. Jesus learned to live a surrendered life. You know, even Jesus, as a little boy, he went to the temple at 12 years old, and he stayed behind, and his parents came and found him, and they said, why have you done this to us? Did you know that Jesus then submitted to their authority? Let me tell you something, church. It's a nasty word in American churches, but you need to submit. We need to learn to submit to the authority of Almighty God and the authority of his word. All of us, from the bishop to the pastor to anyone in the pew, if you're a Christian, your life is one of submission. Jesus, according to Hebrews 5, 8, says, he learned obedience from the thing which he suffered. You know, he suffered on that cross when he said, when, when I am high and lifted up, then you will know that I am the one who I said I was. It's when you suffer for Jesus not asking for you to be rescued for your pleasure and your deliverance, but for God's glory to be manifest. People will say, maybe there's something to your faith. On that cross, before the cross, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Now listen, we have been set free by God's grace, amen. But you and I are still called to be bondservants of the Almighty God. Look what it says in 1 Peter 2.16. Act as free people and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bondservants of God. Even the Apostle Paul in Colossians says, I am a bond slave of Almighty God. It's not what I want to do, it's what does he want me to do. If you're a Christian, do you have that longing to be surrendered and submitted to the spirit of the living God and to the word of God? That's what God calls every Christian to be. Now, Paul went on to say, but you're not supposed to do it because you have to, but you are sons of God, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. It's not a legalism which Judaism fell into. And it's so easy for the Christian church, even the Messianic Christian church, to fall into a legalism. It's not that legalism. It's you are sons and daughters of the living God with his word and his law written on our hearts, filled with his Holy Spirit. And now, how can you be used by you to be surrendered completely to him and say, you are my God and my king, and I'm going to do what my king says to do because I'm submitted to do his will. Our relationship with Jesus has got to be central. I think we need to be preaching the new birth. Not whether you're a member not, not what all you do, how much you give. The question is, is Jesus alive in you? The new birth. See, you and I are called to be one with Jesus as he is with the Father. <laughs> Philip said, he'd been walking with Jesus all the time. He said, okay, Jesus, just show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. And Jesus goes, what? Have you been with me all this time and you don't know, Philip, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. I pray I pray that people can see Jesus in me. It's so possible for us to be so close, so close to God and still not understand or get it. I just praise God when I was in high school and junior high, I had such low self-esteem. I didn't like myself. And I told you, I actually prayed. I prayed some of the dumbest prayers. I actually prayed, ask God to let me kiss some girls, and he never let that happen. I think they were praying the other way. Go let him. I don't know. I pray, God, I hate myself. Can you take, can you give me that guy's body and put my head on his body so I could, because I hated myself. And then I actually changed my prayer and said, God, can I have his head also? Because I don't like my head. It's kind of just put me in him. Let me tell you something. If you've never had low self-esteem, you think like that. Let me tell you, I'm so grateful that I had parents to say, no, you are imago Dei. You're made in the image of Almighty God. Don't you insult God. And yet we're living in a world today that when our kids question themselves and they have low self-esteem and they question their sexuality, then we say, oh, no, you need to change it. And we empower them instead of saying, no, you are made in the image of God. God loves you the way you are. Some of us are thicker. Some of us are thinner. Some of us are thicker in the head. Some of us are lighter in the head. Listen, 
God has called you. He has made you. He has destined you and your purpose for this day. And we have stopped teaching that to our kids. And now we have a government who's telling us if we tell our kids something like that, that we are persecuting them. And it's abuse. Church, we need to stand up and say no. No. Now, listen. The new nature begins with a spiritual birth. It begins with a new birth. It's when you invite Jesus Christ into your heart. You know, it's not about, my number one goal is not about making members here. Oh, let me tell you something. I wish, I wish more people would join us. I wish more people would come, but not so that we would have a successful church, but so people would be born again. And they would get their lives ordered and straightened out. Because let me tell you something, I believe we're coming to the end of time. I believe it's time for us to re reprioritize our lives. Something happened to me when I became a father and my son was born. Something changed in me. And I, man, I, I tell you what, it was no longer how do I, what do I have to do to be a man to protect my wife and protect my, no, something happened in me. And it was how do you stop that guy from standing up for his family? Because I would do anything. Something changed. It's like the chicken became a man. It's possible. Possible for followers of Jesus, disciples, to be in the right place and with the right Savior, but not realize what spirit we're of. James and John, <laughs> leaders. They got so mad at the Samaritans because they didn't want to, to receive Jesus. So they said, Lord, can we call down fire from heaven and fry them all up? And Jesus rebuked them in Luke chapter 9. He says, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. Let me tell you something, church. There are a lot of churches, a lot of Christians today that they are practicing a faith, and they're wearing the bumper stickers and the right jewelry. But my question is, do they have the spirit of Christ? And I'm not, I am not throwing stones. I'm, I am applying this to us. Oh, do we love Jesus? Do we have a heart for the lost? Are we longing for people to come to know Jesus? Let me tell you something. The new nature has got to be guarded. It's got to be nurtured. Christ in you. Him being the Lord of your life. Not you being the Lord of your life for him. There's a difference. Is he the Lord of your life or are you in charge of your life and you're just serving him because you know that's the spiritual thing to do? Did you know in 1 Thessalonians chapter 519, we discovered that you can quench the Holy Spirit. He says, do not quench the Spirit. You and I right now, I get to be irritated you right now. You can think I'm crazy for the things I'm saying to you. But let me tell you something. Jesus said that when you preach the kingdom word, the word of the kingdom, it could be a seed. It could land on the, the path that's been hardened by people walking on it. And it doesn't penetrate. And Satan is going to come and he's going to take that seed and he's going to rob it. And it's very possible that as the word of the kingdom and the truth of God's kingdom is being preached, that you have hardened hearts and you resist it and you don't want to listen to it. And Satan's going to come and take it away so it cannot root. It could also be uh, that there's thorns and thistles. There's, there's compromises in your life to where... The thorns and thistles, the cares of this world. <laughs> You're just more concerned about what, what's going on later, about the ball games, about, about all the busyness, about all those activities to where you don't allow the truth of the kingdom to penetrate to the ground. Also, the hidden rocks. It's under the surface. Hidden sins, compromises, pain that you're not willing to deal with or get them out. And God says you need to take care of the soil of your heart because what he wants you to have fertile soil. And even in the fertile soil, there's a difference in the productivity for some came forth 30, 60, and 100 fold in fruitfulness. Church, I think it's time for us to say, Lord, how do we need 
to respond to have fertile soil as a church so your spirit can move in us. Jesus said, listen, greater works will you do. You ask anything in my name and I'll do it. You know the problem with that is? The problem with that is we read that hoping that we get to do some cool things and miracles that we get to be in control and have our, our every time we go to Walmart, we get the front spot. Then we go to the restaurant and the waiter says, it's free. We're thinking so messed up. Instead of saying, God, what do you want to do with me? And we say, okay, good. You want to do greater works? Go and ask your sister for forgiveness and humble yourself before her and wash her feet. Oh, Lord, you know my sister? He goes, no, but I know you. And that's what I've done for you. You want greater works? Do what Jesus did. That's what the church needs to do. I want to be like Jesus. It's not about doing miracles, but it's loving the lost, forgiving people. And you know what? It's also learning to think like he thinks. And you know what the church has done? We have taken away every foundation and grid work of the way Jesus thought, and we replaced it with different things. So we have to struggle to have his mind. Church, we're changing that. I'm going to start teaching the feasts. I want to start thinking like he thought because the feasts are given to give us a blueprint of the first coming and the second coming. And guess what? We don't even understand those factors, those principles in the word. Ah, I just want, be, gee, I, I want people to know that I'm different. Now, you might say to me, yeah, you are different. Well, I'm waiting for you to be different with me. I heard a story about a man, midlife crisis, hair falling out, overweight. He got all his money. He went and got all the liposuction he could, sucked out every ounce of fat, joined a gym, got a toupee, got veneers put on his teeth, or he had the prettiest teeth ever. He got a sports car. He got fancy clothes. He started dating pretty young ladies. One day, lightning came out of heaven and struck him, and, God, and he said to God, God, why did you do that to me? You know I'm your child. And God looked at him and said, George, is that you? <laughs> I didn't even recognize you. Let me, let me tell you something. I want God to see his likeness in me. I want God to see his likeness in the church. I want the world to see his likeness in us. I want the world to see there's something different about us. You know, the scripture says, listen, and we, unless we apply this to ourselves, instead of Jesus attacking the Pharisees, we're not going to get it. It says here in Matthew, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father who is in heaven, he will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And, and in your name, cast out demons, and in your name, perform many miracles. And then he will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. Church, I don't know what's going on on April 8th, except it's going to get dark. But one thing I think that we need to have for our security is to make sure that you know God and he knows you. And that you don't practice lawlessness. What we need to say is, Jesus, is there something I need to straighten up in my life? As a church, we will continue to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. And we will continue to celebrate the resurrection according to the Christian year. But we will start teaching about the Feast of Israel. And let me just tell you one last thing. I do not think that we need to return to all the laws of Israel because we have a new priesthood and his name is Jesus according to the order of Melchizedek, not Levi. But I'll tell you something. The Ten Commandments, the feasts, 
and the Sabbath have continued to be a standard upon which God wanted us to live. And we have compromised our conviction of being different so the world could tell. We need to keep Sabbath. I know that's going to be a challenging word for some, but I'll be teaching on that in the days to come. But thank God that no matter what storm comes, no matter what happens, our God knows his own. And though your earth might shake, he's going to get that plaque off the living room wall. He's going to put it right where you are. Faith, you have been saved by grace through faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you're so good. Help us. Help us to hear your word being spoke through your spirit to us today. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Church, we're going to take a moment. Rick's got our prayer concerns. He's going to come share them with us. Uh, our praise team is going to come and just help us. Uh, we're going to have a moment of prayer. And I'm going to invite you during this time to, uh, to ask God, is there anything in your life that you need to change? Because I think if Jonah's a sign for us, I think we need to keep in mind his preaching. Repent. <laughs> Repent. And I just said, God, what do you want me to change? Because it was the religious people when Jesus showed up, didn't think, they didn't think they needed to repent. And there were the bad guys in the story. May we humble ourselves before God today. Rick? I have a request for prayer for Pat Ryan, uh, for Dr. Michael Pavlov, and Michael Ryan Pavlov and wife Shauna, who were saved and delivered from alcoholism. Uh, prayer for Robin Pegram for healing. For John Callantine, recovering from back surgery last week. For Sherry Wilson, who is recovering in the hospital from surgery and waiting on an oncologist report about her cancer. Uh, prayer that my neighbors do the right thing. I, I, that's probably a prayer for all of us. Prayer for Kirsty Gilbertson, biopsy this week. And for Amy Morgan Hill, whose serious health issues has serious health issues and is hospitalized. I invite you to come and pray. Pastor Carlos and I will be here. And if you want prayer from one of us or with one of us, just open your hands like this. Meet uh, us in the middle. Meet us in the middle. We both have oil to anoint you with. If you wish to be anointed, just let us know. I invite you to come and pray. Let's also pray for Bryant C who's in the hospital, congestive heart failure, uh, and we need to pray for his heart and his kidneys in the name of Jesus. He said, well, do you have a kidney prayer and do you have a heart prayer? And uh, I came up with some, but they weren't too pleasant. Uh, so if you'll pray for him and also let's pray for everything Callison, from Carl to Yvonne to the dog, okay? Uh, so keep those in mind. Would you come and let's be an attitude of prayer. Seven. 
Jesus, we thank you that all that you ask for us to do is to surrender ourselves to you, <laughs> but to surrender ourselves completely. Lord God, we pray right now that your spirit would move in your church, for there be a fresh flowing of the Ruach Elohim. Come, Holy Spirit, do a work in us. Forgive us of religion that gets in the way of relationship. Forgive us, Lord God, when we have our will consecrated by your name rather than your name glorified by our surrendered lives. Oh, Lord, may we be all in with you because you are all in with us. Lord God, may we learn to live a different life. May we be willing to let the things that do not honor you go and to allow your mind, your heart, your vision, your will to be established in your church because it's your kingdom, you're the king, and we're not in charge. Forgive us, Lord God, for trying to build buildings that accommodate and please ourselves and people rather than line up with you and what your purpose is. Oh, God, May your love and mercy be found in this place. May your spirit be found in this place. May there be a place where people are in love with the truth of God and ready to see God move in power and might. May we not be amongst those who will shrink away in shame at your coming because, Lord, we're ready. We're longing. And we can't wait until the world sees King Jesus our God and our King who loves us, who created us. Oh God, come, put a zeal within each heart, a longing in each heart. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of glory, glory and honor and praise be to you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, I'm excited. I believe God is moving. I am excited. I believe there's going to be an excitement. You know what? I almost feel like we're going to know that there's a fire going on in this nation when people are longing to come to church. People are longing to hear the word of God. They're waiting for you to get up so they can sit down. There's not enough room. Not so that a church will be lifted up, but there will be hungry and thirsty. And if the people of God are not excited about Jesus, then what are we offering this world? I'm tired of Big Mac sermons. Man, I want the meat of God's word. I want the, uh, the flavor of a steak that cause a, a grown Texan to cry. I just want there to be fire in the church. Because I'll tell you what, man, I'm living in a personal revival. <laughs> I'm excited. I could dance and shout. Yes, amen. And I tell you what, there aren't seatbelts in that pew. So you feel free to dance and shout. Because it's time for God to show up in his church and for the people of God to know the difference. Mm -hmm. amen? amen? Okay, I'm preaching all over again. Let's give an invitation. What are, what's our commitment hymn? What are we going to say? Jesus saves. That's a good one. You, you heard that. We're going to sing that today. We're seeing uh, uh, the first and last verses that we got of Jesus saves. And as we do it, 
Listen, if you have never made a commitment to Jesus, then what are you waiting for? You know, let, let's do it today. You don't have to wait to need clips to show up. Just come today. Uh, you, you're living in, I tell you what, some people are living in such darkness in their own lives, they won't even know there's an eclipse. It's time for us to turn over to Jesus. So if you never did that, you come forward. If you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, you come forward. If you want to make this your church home, you simply need more prayer. Guess what? We got prayer warriors. You don't like Rick, Elizabeth's right here, and we'll take you to the side and we'll pray for you. This altar is always open. Amen? Amen. So we invite you to come. Would you please stand and let's sing, Jesus saves. have heard the joyful sound jesus saves jesus saves spread the tidings all around jesus saves jesus saves bear the news to every land climb the steeps and cross the waves on which is our lord's command Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a merry voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. I'm going to invite you to receive the blessing of Almighty God. And please keep in mind as I put these hands up like this, this is the name of El Shaddai. This is the priestly blessing that comes from the priests of Israel over the people of God, for you are the people of God, and in his name you are blessed. And I want you to receive his blessing. Grace, peace, anointing, the kingdom, the name above all names, his heart, his mind, his spirit are yours. Go forth in his victory, go forth in his power, and go forth for his glory's sake. And may the world hear your voice lifting up the name of Yeshua HaMashiach because Jesus saves. You are blessed in him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood he has saved me, with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. All the glory, Lord. Thank you, church, for worshiping with us this morning. Go in his peace and have a good week. Happy St. Patrick.